Hey there, folks. I think we're live. Welcome to those Tuesday Game Reviews live stream. The game I have here today is once again the 39 Steps. We're continuing that game from last time. We played, I guess, an hour and 35 minutes. Well, I think it was more than that, but anyway. I have once again with me Dorian Cairn, voice actor extraordinaire, and regular on the channel. Yeah. Hey, Dorian, how's it going? Don't, don't overhype me, but yes, hi, guys. Why, don't, why should they overhype you? This is like marketing. Uh, yes, I know. I, this is the only voice acting I do. <laughs> but well, I you know, it was funny. Um, my my kids were like asking me like over the weekend to do impressions and stuff, and I was doing impressions. I I do decent impressions of some things, and then my son said you should be a voice actor, and I'm like, well, you know, there's a lot of work you gotta like. It's voice acting is not about doing impressions. If if you go to any voice actor who's professional and you say, hey, I think I could be a voice actor because I do impressions, they'll tell you like. That has nothing to do with being a voice actor, the fact that you can impersonate some voice. Voice acting is about, like, acting, and actually it's very difficult, the fact that, you know, you're not actually able to see the person. It's just, like, just a voice. So, anyway, I'm definitely not a professional. You're not a professional. That's fine. You can be an amateur voice actor. I'm an amateur uh, game player, so we're all, we're all good here. <laughs> I don't know. Getting those things, those, like, bloody, um wooden stone CDs, like uh, game floppies to work on modern PCs. That seems like expert stuff to me. That, yeah, I'm an amateur at that too, but like, it's like, maybe it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> amateur with lots of experience, you know, like they have like, uh, like the Olympics are like your amateurs too, like you can, at least in the back of the, the back of the day, like a long time ago, you couldn't be a professional let's say whatever and also compete in the Olympics. It was only for amateurs, quote unquote. But those amateurs are the best people in the world, so... You know, amateurs means you don't get paid, as far as, as far as I understand. So that's, that's my point. You can be an amateur voice actor and still be really good at it. So, uh, in theory. Uh, no? Well, <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I just like to think I'm okay. Uh, I like to think I'm okay, I guess. Hey there, always I asleep. Agree. Always asleep, Joy. It said, it said, fellas. And then he gave some kind of weird emoji with some guy giving a peace sign, I think. I don't have my glasses on. I'm gonna put them on here. Yeah, it's definitely some guy giving a peace sign. Yeah, so it's very elongated for some reason. Yeah, it is a little bit elongated. I agree. Always to see how's the audio. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear Dorian okay? Yes. Let well, us know how the audio is. Yeah, you just said a little bit like your mic is crappy. I will say that. You you you're, you can hear oh. you fine, but it's. I think it's just your mic is not good, or maybe you like. Did you like put like a like a balloon over it or something? No, I'm really sorry. This is just a. <laughs> crappy um this is just a headset is my, that the same mic from mix. last time or is that why yes all right because right, right. you said you had a better yeah. mic i guess that's the one you couldn't get to work mm, i do i could go and no no no, 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 no don't worry about it I, it's not it's not so bad but when you're actually emoting it's going to be better you're going to be like oh. hello there what is going on on this train or today or something yeah. hey louise right. how's it going yeah. louise says 39 steps to other dimension and he also says fluffy sound from the mic. <laughs> how's yeah. my, how's no, my mic, Louise? <laughs> I got a, a Yeti uh, Blue here, I think it's called. I, I don't know, I bought it a long time ago. It's some kind of nice mic. It's a big, big, like, Kahuna type thing. Here, this is my mic. You can see it here. That's my exciting mic. Anyway, let's get started with the game. Uh... Well, let's continue, continue with the game. <laughs> Always Asleep says, Levels are good. Dorian does sound like he's broadcasting for a Russian submarine, but it ain't too bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Ah, oh, this is annoying. Ah, oh, sorry. Hang on. Um, damn. Ah, it was working okay last time. <sighs> Your screen, well, I, Louis says, we can even hear your chair. I'm actually calling up the company tomorrow because these chairs are supposed to have a 10 year warranty. And, like, not only is the is the chair squeaky for, like, years, it also has, um, like, one of the arms, like, the cover of the arm almost completely came off. And it says on the website there's a 10 year warranty, except for the upholstery is only five years. And I bought it in November 2018. So I'm actually going to call up tomorrow and ask if I can get some warranty service in this chair. So maybe the chair will stop squeaking. If not, yeah, I'll get a new chair. But the same, it's crazy. This chair I bought in 2018, it was 200 bucks. 
I went on to staples.com and it was like, um, it was on sale for like 300 to 200. Now it's like, I don't know, the same exact chair. It's like 400 and it's on sale for 279 or something like that. Why, why does the same chair go up in price? I don't get it. Oh, anyway. Maybe they release new models. He says 10 years warranty. I'd like that for my car. No, the exact same model. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to get to the game here. All right. I'm so sorry. Could you uh, just, could you start broadcasting again? Because I, I had to. Actually, oh, you, you lost gonna, your, hang you lost on. the share? No, no, no. The Yes, the share. Um, actually, I'm, I'm just going to briefly hang up and call you again. Just so I can disconnect. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Pay no attention, folks, the man behind the curtain. Yeah. All right, Meanwhile, Hannah is sleeping here, so... Nah. Anyway, uh, do, do keep us updated about the audio, folks, because if it is bad enough, I will take steps to... to, to so, <coughs> take whatever steps I can to fix it. So you're calling me back? Is that what you said? No, no, no. I've, I've done it. Oh, you're um, not calling me back, but you still can't see it. No. Yeah, I can see it. Fine. Oh, you can't uh, see yeah, it? Yeah, and... Yeah, I can see it now, yes. Oh, okay, all right. And, and they keep us updated about the um, the m microphone situation, because, folks, because I will take steps to change it if I can. They said the audio... It always seems says the audio fucking sucks. Really God, I'm sorry he, he about didn't really, He didn't really say that. I'm just, I'm just messing with you, man. All right, we got another issue uh -huh. with the Scotsman here today. Look at this Mary Nolan underwear... Solves the summer underwear problem. What the hell? Oh my god, underwear. That that was that was, that was illegal in the 90s. It's a special fabric to turn after long research. It's worthy in every respect of the intimate position that the underwear occupies in the wardrobe. That's interesting. Alright, is there anything oh, interesting probably. in this paper that's relevant to us? <laughs> Ooh, look, there is here. We can lit it up in, in white so we can see it. Oh, okay. Uh, Empire Day, Murder Shops, London. Police question, first day, London, Sunday morning. Scotland Yard's top officers have been called into direct action following the brutal slaying of a decorated British officer in an affluent apartment block in London near Portland Place. The killing took place during last week's Empire Day celebrations. The as yet unnamed man was discovered in the first floor flat on Sunday morning by its valet, a Mr. Paddock. Intriguingly, the victim was not in charge of the apartment and the owner was not to be found. Even more intriguing, <clears throat> intriguing is the arrest of a local milkman, found whilst whis found while found whistling in the hallway of the of the apartment, a mere five minutes five minutes away from the Oxford Street from Oxford Street. Mr. Paddock sprang the alarm and had the young man arrested. Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. McGill Mr. McGilvery said, oh, "Sorry, McGilvery said his top officers were currently interviewing the, the suspect." This is one of the most horrendous murders we have had in this part of London for some time. The fact that it happened on Empire Day just makes the whole affair even more did, abhorrent. Did, did, we, did we read we this will... before? I think we did. I think the gist of it was that um, the, the 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 guy who we met, his body has been found. Um, oh, and they give and he they assume he was Captain Digby, as he claimed. Yeah, we did read uh, this like, before. It's, uh, it's... Yeah, I think we did. Oh. The the gist is, they found him. They assumed he was Captain Digby because that was the name he'd given Paddock yesterday. Right. Okay. So what else is there here? Hmm. Ooh. Missing airman. Suffrage suffragette oh. outrages. Okay. Damage. Oh, this is not really it. That's uh. You know, just a bit of context for the historical period. I guess. Okay, well, this is. Did we read this before? I feel like we did too. Uh, let me see. Uh, Portland Place killer on the run, thought to be traveling north. New twists and turns in the case of the Portland Place murder. Scotland Yard releases its prime suspect and reveals that the true criminal has escaped the capital. But Scotland Yard Commissioner Mr. McGilvery was unwilling to elaborate on further details as to whom the murderer might be. We have reason to believe that the killer has left London by one of the northern lines. We no longer have reason to suspect the milkman is our murderer, or has any connection with the killing of Captain Theophilus Digby, found dead earlier this week. 
Captain Digby is reported to have been on home leave and staying with a friend in an apartment near London's affluent Portland Place apartments. Chief Investigating Officer Mr. Scaife told the Times, This was a brutal slaying of an honourable man. We urge anyone who may have seen or heard anything on the, on the night of the 23rd of May to come forward and make yourself known. The owner of the apartment is <coughs> in question, and Mr. Richard Hannay, is still missing. So can you guys hear him okay in terms of the volume? It's a little quiet to me, but as long as you guys can hear him. Luis says he has to call yeah, from another, another compartment. The submarine is busy today. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, I'm sorry. I can, I can look. No, no, no. I, don't, I don't worry. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. I'm just kidding you. All right. I, so now, now we have to go to the bathroom. So I think we have to draw the images on the screen. Like, you know, we, we do like the, the dragging on the screen, like make the pictures. So I think there's like, you know, you, you press down to make your zipper go open and then up to take out your thing. And then there's like, you know, sh like a circular motion to shake it around afterwards or something like that. Oh god. No, I just made that up. Uh, oh god. <laughs> There's probably a game like that though. Smell the alcohol, yes. I feel like we did this before. Did I somehow end up with like a yeah. chapter we did already? Mm. Project Yeah, I think it, this is the point we left off where we jumped off the train. Yeah, but didn't they like, uh, didn't it start a new chapter? Maybe it didn't, I don't know. I might as well keep going, we might as well go and read it. Okay, we were approaching the station at which I got out yesterday. What, what, what just happened? Oh, uh, that was huh? interesting. Uh, yeah. What the fuck? Could he... What? Yeah, that's weird. Let's try it again. Yeah. Is this game bugging out? We are approaching the station at which I got out yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, now that is a good, that is a good impression of a train. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely did this before. Might as well read it again, though. The potato digging master had been the potato digging master had been gingered into some activity, for the west going train was waiting to let us pass. Fr from it descended three men who were asking him questions. Sitting well back in the shadow, I watched them carefully. All the, part, all the party looked out across the moor where the right white road departed. I hoped they were going to take up my tracks there. I supposed they, that they were the local police who had been stirred up by Scotland Yard and had traced me as far as this one horse siding. One of them had a book and took down notes. The old potato digger seemed to have turned peevish. The child who had collected my ticket was talking volubly. What does volubly mean? Is that a word? I don't know. Never heard that one before. <laughs> volubly. I feel like it's... Uh... See, I didn't oh. question it last time when I was tired. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's, it's a, it felt like, it, felt like it's an old word. Maybe taken directly from the novel. Yeah, it's true. 1915. As we moved away from that station, the old shepherd began to stir. This is that the drug guy. Yeah, with the dog. Yeah. Oh. 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 Quiet, you, you sh Where am I? Oh, Kick the door. You're on a train. Uh -huh. Travelling east towards Dumfries. That is not like right. train, Scotland. Oh, oh, yeah. that's what comes of being a teetotaler. I'm just, just going to go skip, skip through this because we did this already. Look, I don't have to read it again. We read it last time. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought this bit was voice acted. I took the pledge last month and was now hardly touched a drop of whiskey since then. Holy bread. Not even a hug my knee. Oh, I was yeah. so tempted. That's what he says. Oh, yeah, I remember oh, that bit. Oh, that's what I get. I hid well in hell. Fire and twine looking different ways for the Sabbath. 
The Sabbath! Here, I drank the core. Brandy! Being a teetotal, I keep half the whiskey, but I was, oh, I was not, not, no idea there's brandy, and I doubt I'll not be wheeled for the fun, eh? It's not like a tall duck, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's that tank. I see, just over the tree, you said, eh? I looked out and saw that every character was... Oh. I just skipped it. Did we get it already before? So yeah, no, that's no. Let's move forward here. So I dropped quickly from the pond. It would have been alright but for that infernal dog. Did you have old timer? <laughs> Seriously, I guess when you live out in the moors, there's not much else to do. I could not have made a more public departure if I'd left with a bugler and a, bla and a brass band. Happily, the drunken shepherd provided a diversion. I want to see what they quickly hold on this. I'm not sure if this big guy's still up. Okay, I just think they're out. They're worried about the work. Just the... I, want, I don't want it too quiet, actually, but... It just drowns out sometimes. What does? The game. The, the background noise uh. of the game. I probably should just left it alone. Whatever. Oh, crap. Oh, it's about... Oh, man. How does that happen? I, I, I Wait, said, what, can you not... Well, can you do, not go it, back? Like, yeah, what the hell? Press how do I go back to where I was? To your story. Here we go. Alright, good. That's how you do it. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Another made more public exit if I left with a... You've got a blast, blast back. Blast back. Blast back. Happily, this drunken shepherd provided diversion. He and his dog, which was attached by a rope to his waist, suddenly cascaded out of the carriage. He fell off himself. <laughs> oh, yes. And there's no tetanus back then, so he's gonna die. They had forgotten me. I looked back, but there was nothing in the landscape. For the first time, I felt the terror of the hunted on me. It was not the police that I thought of, but the other folk, who knew that, who knew that I knew Scudder's secret and dared not let me live. I was certain that they would pursue me with, with, pursue me with a keenness and vigilance unknown to the British law and that once their grip closed on me, I should find no mercy. The mood did not leave me until I had reached the rim of the mountain and flung myself panting on a, on a ridge high above the young waters of the river. Amazing graphics still. No, it's gorgeous. The paint. The painterly look is just lovely. Yeah. I have eyes like a hawk, but I could see nothing moving in the whole countryside. Then I looked into the blue May sky, and there I saw that which set my pulses pulses racing. Uh oh. It's a, it's oh my plane. god, planes. Those are like just invented. I was certain as if I'd been told I was as certain as if I'd been told that the aeroplane was looking for me and that it did not belong to the police. These heather hills were no sort of cover if my enemies were in the sky, and I must find a different kind of sanctuary. I collected the plan, that's good. Oh, nice. Now we can <laughs> escape. I kept on woods.
About six in the evening, I came out of the moorland. Should I approach or should I like not approach? And I should well, like to come here. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, see if you can walk toward it, walk into a tree. I got a lot of choices. Approach, or I... yeah. <laughs> What's this? Peat smoke and savory roast floated from the house. I want, I want some savory roast. Ooh, that does sound good. What's that click on? Mm, looks like that's it. Something else I'm supposed to click on. Uh, a, oh, right. Oh. As when a. Gr oh. I think he was talking. As when a griffin through the wilderness with winged step. As when a griffin through the wilderness with winged step o'er hill and moody dale pursues the Aramaz. Aram. Aramas. Aramas. What? What was uh, that? I feel like it's a, I feel like he's reciting a. Someone's reciting a poem. Yeah, it's all like. I don't know, it's a little weird. Good evening to you. It's a fine night for the road. I guess someone's there. Is that to... place an inn? At your service. I'm the landlord, sir. And I hope you will stay the night, for to tell you the truth, I've had no company for a week. Oh, now we've got the innkeeper. I pulled myself up on the parapet of the bridge and filled my pipe. Guys in the chat, let us know if you can hear this okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, I do let it, do keep us updated, folks, because, like, I will take steps oh, you to sound fine. I can. You sound fine now. It's just the music was drowning you out before. You're good now. I just want to make sure that overall the volume is good. Yeah, but still, I'm going to take different measures next time. I began to detect an ally. Yo, young, to be an innkeeper? My father died a year ago and left me the business. I lived there with my grandmother. It's a slow job for a young man, and it wasn't my choice of profession. Which was? He actually blushed. I want to write books. <laughs> and what better chance could you ask? Those man, I've often thought that an innkeeper would make yeah. the best storyteller in the world. Well, back then it would be called a Maybe in the old days when you had pilgrims and model or something. makers and high women and yeah, male coaches on the road. But not now. Nothing well, they comes have motor cars full of fat women who stop for lunch and a fisherman or two in the spring and the shooting tenants in August. There's not much material to be got out of that. I want to see life, to travel the world and write things like Kipling and Conrad. But the most I've done yet is to get some verses printed in Chambers' journal. I looked at the inn standing golden in the sunset against the brown hills. Well, it always just seems that it sounds good, but the music does drown everything out a bit when it kicks in. I've and knocked a bit so. about the world, and I wouldn't despise such a hermitage. Do you think that adventure is only found in the tropics or among gentry in red shirts? Maybe you're rubbing shoulders with it at this moment. That's what Kipling says. Brother romance and all unseen bromance brought up the 915. Bromance? Um, yes. Bro. But here's a true tale bromance for you the then. Guys. And a month from now, you can make a novel out of it. So like he said, bromance. Oh, look at this, this Yeah, it did sound like... Ooh. A retro. A story of epic proportions. Mr. Richard Hannay was a successful mining magnate from Kimberley, Australia. Then his luck changed and he ran into serious financial troubles. <laughs> Get the ministry of silly walks. We're here for the money. I owe you nothing. What the? Uh, it's it's not a very story. Um... <laughs> Thugs chased Hane across the Kalahari to German Africa, pursuing him across the ocean. How much money did this guy owe them? Well, he was in all the De Beers Diamond Syndicate, so he must have a lot of money. Oh. Yeah, no, I guess that. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. He would be pretty rich.
and then maybe it doesn't have trains. <laughs> That's how you traveled back then. <laughs> and it sinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it, that, that's the twist. He's on the Titanic. Well, they found him here, too. Oh, my God, these guys are determined. He got away and fled to London. How did he get away? He was on a ship. Oh, yeah. But they tracked him down. But seriously, how did he get away? They had him on the ship. My hat! They had killed his friend. And they were chasing... Ha and were chasing Hane yet. It's all a bullshit story, basically. Oh, yeah. That's cool, the sound of the projector shutting down. Hey, Pal Puck, how's it going? You're looking for adventure? Hi, Pal Puck. Well, you found it here. The devils are after me, and the police are after them. It's a race that I mean to win. By God! It's all pure Ryder Haggard at Conan Doyle! You believe me? Of course I do! I believe everything out of the common. The only thing to distrust is the normal. He was very young, but was the man for my money. You're watching it through the share he for, with me, not through the YouTube thing, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I do have the, I do have the stream on my phone. But, oh, that's fine. Um, I'm just curious. Make sure, make sure sorry, is, is am I? Is there a lot of delay? There's a, a, a small delay, but it didn't seem very much. So I was curious. I figured that's what was happening, but I wasn't. I was just checking. Well, I'll see. If I, maybe I can. I think they're off my track for the moment, but I must lie close yeah. for a couple of days. Can you take me in? Ah, uh, sorry. Um, he caught my elbow in his eagerness and drew me toward the house. As I entered the inn porch, I heard from far off the beat of an engine. The plane. The plane, boss. The plane. Oh. Ah, oh, I got that reference even though I never saw it. <laughs> you know they made a terrible horror movie based on that show? There was a horror movie? He gave me... Something? Yep, they're just uh, like... Oh, I'll tell you that. He gave, out, he gave me a room at the back of the house with a fine overlook, over, <clears throat> outlook, outlook over the plateau. I smoked in a chair till daylight, for I could not sleep. Smoking. Oh my. That was what men did back then. The next morning I wanted some time to myself, so I invented a job for him. He had a motor bicycle, and I sent him off next morning for the daily paper, which usually arrived with the post in the late afternoon. I told him to keep his eyes skinned, and make note of any strange figures he saw, keeping a special sharp lookout for motors and aeroplanes. Then I sat down in real earnest to Scudder's notebook. Ooh, stuff to kick on, probably. I mean, not much to read here. Mm -hmm. Collected jet. It says blah 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 blah. It's a code. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to read that. <laughs> no. Ooh. You want to read that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was just asking. Actually, no, actually, I can read it like this. Um, thank you for sending us your latest poem. Of Dear Mr. Fraser, thank you for sending us your latest poem, A Frozen Heart in Summer Days. We will be delighted to publish your poem in the January issue of next year. We will return the manuscript once it has been copied by recorded post. Sincerely yours, Edward Beethon, editor, Chambers Journal. I suppose I should do that in a Scottish Here's the poem, too. Can you read it? Oh. Uh, could you put, put, put on the show text? Good voice actor, folks. Not a good reader. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I just struggle with cursive, with fancy handwriting. <laughs> a frozen heart in summer days. Last winter, our chests were warm, as homely fires burnt till dawn. The inn was full with passing trade, a perfect home for travellers bade. 
The spring was pleasant. <clears throat> the spring was pleasant, and new life did spring. We cooked up pheasant that my father brought in, but things did change as the sun arrived. But things did change as my father died. The place came empty. My thoughts then lost. The passing of life is the eternal cost. Now this summer our chests are cold. The inn no, no <clears throat> this inn no longer the place of old. My heart is frozen like the eternal look on my father's face as his life was took. But life goes on, but life goes on. I take over the business as my father's son. My dreams will hold, though never gone. My words have meaning, my father's son. It's pretty good call. Yeah, it's all right. Oops. I have to sing it, I thought they got to do else. Oh, I think this for highlighting you for me. Alright, I can do I was born in the land of Scotland, where the heather was turning when the heather was turning brown. I grew in the hills of Scotland, then wanted to leave my town. I'm born in the land of Scotland. Please take me away. These desolate plains of Scotland are not where I, where I wish to stay. Good luck at that published in Scotland, buddy. I don't know if it's going to do you yeah. Yeah. too well. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's why um, Robert Burns is in the National Poet of Scotland, because all his poems were like, yeah, Scotland, <laughs> Scotland sucks. <laughs> I relate, though, because it's how I feel about my country. <laughs> What's this? What the innkeeper? It's like a book, I guess. Oh. Donald woke to the sound of hammering. Thump, the, thump, the hammer did strike. Thump, the hammer pierced his brain, again and again. The beam above his head creaked as the wind whistled round the small cottage. He heard his grandmother move about, about in the next room. His father would be at the river already, checking to see if the eggs had hatched. That sounds like a shitty story. Mm, yeah, get, get good. Ooh, what's this? Is this the front page? Yeah. Yeah. It is the front page. Uh, newspapers were... to read this, uh, this the highlights here. of ones. Newspapers were dense back then. Port Portland Place murders murderer in Scotland. Borders police mo mobilised. London police have reason to believe that the Portland Place murderer has travelled north into Scotland in his bid to escape the authorities. It has also come to light that the milkman has provided damning evidence against the flat's owner, Mr. Richard Hannay, in connection to the murder of Captain Theophilus Digby. He told me that he was playing a game, said the milkman. He, he, needed, me to be a, he needed to be a milkman for half an hour, and I believed him, but he never came back. He took my hat and coat, the thief. The milkman's uniform has since been discovered behind a hoarding in an alleyway opposite Mr. Hannay's apartment. Fear not, if there is a killer in Scotland, we will track him down said Lothian and Borders Police Chief, Mr. Lothian and Borders Police Chief, Mr. Hamy Hamish Smith. We will be putting extra resources into this manhunt. Should anyone spot Mr. Hannay, a 37-year-old man of average height and build, they should not try and apprehend him. Hannay is known to be a military man with considerable skills with weaponry. This is a great description. I think they're definitely going to catch it like that. 37-year-old yeah. man of average height and build. <laughs> yeah, no. Just don't approach any 30-something men who look average. <laughs> This looks like it's not related. Yeah, about suffragettes. What's this up here? The, oh, the Balkans, Albania Oops. revolt. Insurance released oh, to all the prisoners. That kind of relates to the main plot, because, like, they said, like, the these the secret society is causing unrest or whatever, and they want to start wars. Well, this is about that guy, and... Carolides, but this is, it, it looks like, uh, if you try to read this, everywhere the chat will fall asleep at the same time. It's all just a bunch yeah. of blah, blah, blah. So just uh, basically, I think we're he's, involved in some he's involved <laughs> in some tension with the Balkans. And it mentions every single country that ever existed. <laughs> I think let's just keep yeah. going. Uh, just one thing to look at. What is it? Oh, man. That collects <laughs> newspapers or something. Oh, damn. Well, that was the internet back then. Just a big guess, cover yeah. of newspapers.
I glanced out of the window. Oh. There seemed to be two two of them, men in aquas aquas. I have no idea what that is. And tweed caps. <laughs> What's an aquascutum? Aquascutum. Aquascutum. Oh man, I have no idea what that is. One was slim, the other was sleek. That was the most I could make of my reconnaissance. Ten minutes later, the innkeeper slipped into the room, his eyes bright with excitement. There's two chaps below looking for you. They're in the dining room having whiskies and sodas. They asked about you and said they'd hoped to meet you here. Oh, and they described you jolly well. It's down to your boots and shirt. I told them you'd been here last night and gone off on a motor bicycle this morning. And one of the chaps... Swore like a navvy. Who a navvy is? Hmm. I think it's a Scottish term for like a sailor. Mm, maybe. And I made him tell me what they looked like. One was a dark, dark-eyed, thin fellow with bushy eyebrows. The other was always smiling and lisped in his talk. Neither was any kind of foreigner. On this, my young friend was positive. I took a bit of paper and wrote words in German as if they were part You could have the reserve. Oh, sorry. I took a bit of paper and wrote words in German as if they were part of a letter. Take this down and say it was found in my bedroom and ask them to return it to me if they overtake me. Okay. Hmm. Blackstone. Scudder has got Scudder has got onto this, but he could not act for a fortnight. I doubt if I can do any good now, especially as Carolides is uncertain about his plans. But if Mr. T advises I, I advises I will do the best I yeah, Mr. T. <laughs> I pity the fool mess with Mr. Hannay. Yeah. Your paper <laughs> woke them up. The dark fellow witnessed White as death and cursed like blazes. And the fat one whistled and looked ugly. They paid for their drinks with half a sovereign and wouldn't wait for change. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Get on your bicycle and go off to Newton Stewart to the chief constable. Describe the two men and say you suspect them of having had something to do with the London murder. You can invent reasons. The two will come back, never fear. Not tonight, for they'll follow me 40 miles along the road, but first thing tomorrow morning, tell the police to be here bright and early. Doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Uh, sorry, what was that? It doesn't sound like a good idea to get the police there because the police are going to arrest him. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's a, I don't know why he's doing that. He set off like a docile child while I worked at Scudder's Notes. I had a sudden inspiration. Scudder had said Julia Chechen Chechen Yi was the key to the Carolides business, and it occurred to me to try it on his cipher. It worked. The five letters of <coughs> oh, sorry, the five letters of Julia gave me the position of the vowels. Chechenyi gave me the numerals for the, for the principal consonants. I scribbled that scheme on a bit of paper. You don't get about that is like you should have to solve a cipher without knowing the code. I mean, it's not that it's, it's anyway. It's, that, it's not yeah. definitely doable. Yeah, but like I feel like you have to you'd have to study it for ages if you're not an expert. In half an hour I was reading with a whitish face and fingers that drummed on the table. Was he in intelligence? <laughs> in military intelligence? Oh yeah. Well, that's supposed, oh, yeah, to be an, like, actually, that's supposed to be an oxymoron though, military intelligence. <laughs> well, I'm sure some, some military people are intelligent. <laughs> hmm. That evening we dined together. Out of common decency I had to let him pump me for information. Palpox is an aqua scudum is a brand of clothing. A brand? Yeah, I looked that up. I, I looked that up, it is, but like I can't find anything that, like what what specifically is it referring to? Like what specific piece no of clothing idea. Is weird. Uh okay. I gave him a, a lot of stuff about lion hunts and the Matabele War, thinking all the while what tame business these were <clears throat> what tame businesses these were compared to this I was now engaged in. The food looks pretty good. 
Yeah, now that looks like a good, nice bread. Hearty meal. When he when he was up, up to <clears throat> when he went to bed again, I sat up. It's daytime. Hey, we did not get assassinated in the night. I had finished Scudder's book. Okay, now we're finally at the news event. Oh, okay. Let's see what else we got. Have you coded Scudder's book? So, uh, okay. Okay. Pack of lies. Oh, no. Do, do, do. The inn, the only inn in Scotland. Yeah, oh, yes. Not a popular tourist spot, I'm sure. <laughs> A nice, comfortable end. No, no, it's nice. Quite, kind of homely. The next morning I witnessed from my room the arrival of two constable sergeants. Yeah, I'm really not getting why he wanted them to come here. They're more like aquascrotum, Robert says. <laughs> <laughs> they put their car in a coach house under the innkeeper's instructions and entered the house. I guess like that's a garage. They parked in the garage. Yeah. Yes, but it was coach house. Twenty minutes later I saw from my window a second car come to the plateau from the opposite direction. It did not come up to the inn but stopped two hundred yards off in the shelter of a, of a patch of wood. <coughs> Damn it. You okay there, man? Yeah, no, just had a cough for a while. I hope it's not too... I hope it's not ruining this too much. <coughs> that box is more like aqua screwing. Yeah, I saw that earlier. <laughs> They were wearing scrotums. <coughs> okay. Palpuck is missing I know. that other game. What was that game called again? Fade. <laughs> that was uh, oh, right. Yeah, that was a good one. It was like <laughs> weird as hell, but it was, it was super interesting. With the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, what's it, the janitor, not the janitor, the, the guard in the, in the uh, insane asylum with the, with the porno magazine in the bathroom. <laughs> messed up. Anyway, sorry, I keep reading. <laughs> oh, those insatiable French. <laughs> I noticed that its occupants carefully reversed it before leaving it. My plan had, be to, had been to lie hidden in my bedroom and see what happened. I had a notion that if I could bring the police and my other more dangerous pursuers together, something might work out of it to my advantage. That is a terrible plan. That is not a good plan. <laughs> but now I had a better idea. I guess Ooh. I'm gonna write something. I actually have a choice, wow. Oh, wow. I wonder if this diverges the path. I doubt it, still. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanna write thank you. Yeah. I guess I, I guess, guess you'd have to do that, but uh... Just thanking the innkeeper. Jeez. <laughs> Look at this. The guys just think. It's too bad you don't, you don't get to go to the toilet, like I said before. Yeah. <laughs> That would be really funny. <laughs> so this guy's really so, so pathetic. He can't even go to the bathroom by himself without you, like, you know, drawing these pictures for him. <laughs> that would be depressing. <laughs> these directions. To open a window, too. Oh, they, oh, they can steal their car. Oh, my God. I stole gently out onto the plateau. I collected their car. <laughs> So long, suckers! The wind seemed to bring me the sound of angry voices. <laughs> Get back here, little <laughs> car! You son of a oh. bitch! I wish cars had keys you now! Picture me driving that 40 HP car for all she was worth over the crisp moor roads on that shining May morning. Glancing back at first over my shoulder and looking anxiously to the next turning. Then, driving with a vague eye just wide enough awake to keep on the highway. For I was thinking desperately of what I had found in Scudder's pocketbook. Sort of, sort of quiet there. Hmm. Ooh, are we going to read all this? day of June was going to be a day of destiny, a bigger destiny than the killing of a Dago. 
It was so big that I didn't blame Scudder for keeping me out of the game and wanting to play a lone hand. That, I was pretty clear, was his intention. Okay. Hmm. The whole story was in the notes, with gaps, you understand, which he would have filled up from his memory. He stuck down his authorities, too, and had an odd trick of giving them all a numerical value and then striking a balance which stood for the reliability of each stage in the yard. In spite of all the nonsense talked in Parliament, there was a real working alliance between France and Britain, and the two general staffs met every now and then and made plans for joint action in case of war. Well, in June, a very great swell was coming over from Paris, and he was going to get nothing less than a statement of the disposition of the British Home Fleet on mobilization. It was something uncommonly important. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Is it the same oh, thing? Despite all the nonsense talking about oh, the same thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh man. Now oh, that's annoying. <coughs> that's dumb. And the two general staffs met every now and then and made plans for joint action in case of war. <coughs> yeah. In June, a very great swell was coming over from Paris. I guess you should know the fact that we're zooming it up both of those pictures. The disposition of the British yeah. fleet on mobilization. It was something uncommonly important. Thank you, Mr. Hannay. Hannay. Oh Black stone in Scotland. The bare bones of the tale were all that was in the book. These and one queer phrase which occurred half a dozen times inside brackets. Thirty-nine steps was the phrase. And at its ah, last time of use, it ran. Thirty-nine steps. I counted them. High tide, 10.17 p.m. I could make nothing of that. I'm guessing we're going to find something hidden. It was no question of preventing a war. That was coming, as sure as Christmas. Had been arranged, said Scudder, ever since February 1912. Carolides was going to be the occasion. So what I understand about this is like in actual real life, my understanding is that World War One started because our Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria was assassinated, or Aust Austria-Hungary, whatever it was called at the time. Franco-Prussian hmm. Empire, but I think. Anyway, it's a real guy was actually premise, killed. I guess the premise is that, like, these guys, the bad guys in this, caused it by assassinating him instead. Yeah, so it's <laughs> the Carolides, it's, it changes, like, the historical thing a little bit. I, I mean, it seems like, I don't know. It was going to come as a mighty surprise to Britain. Carolides' death would set the Balkans by the ears, and then Vienna would chip in with an ultimatum. Russia wouldn't like that, and there would be high words, but Berlin would play the peacemaker and pour oil on the waters, till suddenly she would find a good cause for a quarrel, pick it up, and in five hours let fly at us. That was the idea, and a pretty good one too. So maybe they, they, they're saying this is the original plan, and then afterwards, um, since that didn't happen, they assassinated this other guy and started the war. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I think that's. That, I feel like that's it. That's a pretty cool concept. Yeah. When something like this is like, when you work it right into actual historical events, it feels more like solid. Yeah, for like, sure. It feels more built in reality. I like that. On the bare moor, I was at the aeroplane's mercy. My only chance was to get out, get to the leafy color of the cover of the valley. <coughs> then I came. Then came a thick wood where I slackened my speed. Stupid airplane! It's like a like a surface-to-air missile. Oh my God. A roar. Suddenly I heard the hooting of another car and realized upon my horror that I <clears throat> that I was almost upon a couple of gateposts through which a private road debouched onto the highway. I clapped on my brakes, but my impetus was too great. I did the only thing possible and ran slap into the hedge on the right. Oh no. Uh oh. Ah! 
And then I fell off the cliff and died. Look at Wilhelm screaming. Arr! <laughs> no, no one, I feel like no one can imitate the Wilhelm scream. It's like, like, that was good. I like that though. <laughs> Arr! Ow. Yeah, it's like Wilhelm scream is so weird. It's like that. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like the, the most widely used scream in Hollywood history is like also one of the worst ones. I know it's like sounds nothing like a real scream if someone shot me in the chest with an arrow I wouldn't be like ow I'd be like oh my god yeah, no, seriously <laughs> anyway maybe that was... <laughs> uh, a branch of Hawthorne had got me in the chest lifted oh. me up and held me while a, while a tunnel or two of expensive metal slipped below. Because all these cars are open body. Like, there were no, no hit roofs on these cars, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, they weren't fast enough for that to be necessary. Uh, he's got super lucky. Basically, that, the, the lack of a roof saved his ass. <laughs> yeah. Slowly, that thorn let me go. These cars would be so much safer if they didn't have roofs. Yeah. As I scrambled to my feet, a hand took me by the arm. I found myself looking at a tall young man. I say, bless me, I'm dreadfully sorry. Are you hurt? R really, I, I must apologise. Oh, bless my soul. Do tell me you're all right. My blame, sir. It's lucky that I did not add homicide to my follies. Mm -hmm. That's the end of my Scotch motor tour. It might have been the end of my life. He plucked out a watch and studied it. You're the right sort of fellow. I can spare a quarter of an hour, and my house is two minutes off. I'll see you clothed and fed and snug in bed. Where's your kit, by the way? Is it in the burn along with the car? It's in my pocket. A toothbrush? I'm a colonial. I travel light. A colonial? By <laughs> gad, you're the very man I've been praying for. Are you by any blessed chance a free trader? A free trader? I am. Oh, good show. What's a free trader? I have no idea. I don't know what that is. Um, but this is... Everyone's very hospitable in this. He patted my shoulder and hurried me into his car. I'm guessing in, like, 1915, people were more hospitable. Like, not today. It's like, you'd be like, Hey, F you, jackass! You're my car! You know, like... That's for sure what happened today. I mean, they, they, they wouldn't care at all. They just called the complete insurance or whatever. I don't know. Well, I guess they didn't invent murder yet. Also, probably back then, win. only rich people had cars, so that's probably part of it. Yeah. Yeah, no one else knew how to use them. Free Trader was a political label used in the United Kingdom by several candidates. And, uh, this is mainly blue. Some political yeah. party? Yeah, it's some kind of political movement. Free Traders were in favor of limited social reforms and, in particular, free trade. Okay. Uh, I guess it's like. Hmm. Um, presently, we drew up before a comfortable looking shooting box, and he ushered me indoors. It's a shooting box. I don't know. I'm learning a lot of new terms today. First, he flung half a dozen of his suits before me, for my own had been pretty well reduced to rags. I selected a loose blue serge, which differed, <clears throat> which differed most conspicuously from my former garments, and borrowed a linen collar. I wrote a serge as either, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what most of these things are. Then he hauled me to the dining room. He hailed, hauled or hailed? I don't know. Hailed, oh, hailed me, no. It's <laughs> I don't know what that means either, so maybe it's hold. Thank you. The shooting boxes are You find me in a deuce of a mess, Mr. Oh, by the by, you haven't told me your name. Uh, Twiston. Twiston? Any relation to old Tommy Twiston of the 60th? No? Oh well. Well, you see, I'm the liberal candidate for this part of the world, and I had a meeting on tonight at Brattleburn, and that's my chief town, and an infernal Tory stronghold. I'd got the colonial ex-premier fellow, Crumpleton, coming to speak for me tonight, and had the thing tremendously billed, and the whole place ground-baited. This afternoon, I had a wire from the ruffian saying he'd got influenza at Blackpool. Here I am, left to do the whole thing myself. I had meant to speak for ten minutes, and now I must go on for forty. And though I've been racking my brains for three hours to think of something, I simply cannot last the course. Now you've got to be a good chap and help me. You're a free trader and can tell our people what a, a washout protection is in the colonies. All you fellows have the gift of the gab. I wish to heaven I had it. I'll be forevermore in your debt. 
Okay. Mm. Yes, we gotta we gotta get into politics now. <laughs> I had very few notions about free trade, but I saw no other chance of getting what I wanted. All right. <clears throat> uh, I'm not much good as a speaker, but I'll tell them a bit about Australia. Oh. At my words, the the cares of the ages slipped from his shoulders. Now we have Sir Harry. He lent me a big driving coat and never troubled to ask why I had why I'd started on a motor motor tour without passing and possessing an Ulster. Papox says, oh no, politics in the years. What do you think of, of Donald Trump, old sir? <laughs> oh. oh, dreadfully boring, isn't he? As we slipped down the dusty road, the young man poured into my ears the simple facts of his history. Who really cares, but alright. Right. He knew about horses and jawed away about the derby entries, and he was full of plans for improving his shooting. Didn't have video games back then. <laughs> Sir Harry was orphaned at an early age and was brought up by his uncle, who was a member of the British cabinet. He had gone, ar he had gone round the world after leaving Cambridge, and then, being short of a job, his uncle had advised politics. But he had no preference in parties. He was liberal because his family had always been Whigs. His uncle pulled a few strings and posted Harry in, Tweedled in Tweeddale as the liberal candidate, without any hope of him winning over its conservative constituents. Sounds like a waste of time to me. Yeah, well, it's nice to get landed a cushy job to work for. I guess. <laughs> Altogether, a very clean, decent, callow young man. New event, the radical candidate. Oh my. Yeah, it's a little event. Sir Harry's pickle. <laughs> What's it, it saying here? Yeah, Sir Harry's pickle. <laughs> That's a little bit into it, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a, it's just Victorian speak. Yeah, yeah no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ride Sir Harry Pickle later. <coughs> <laughs> I mean, Egypt. That would have been a bit better in the end, right? Oh my god, we're a mason. <laughs> Oh wow, what are the sense of the wall there? Oh, can't read it. Yeah, there it is. Quite far away. Maybe I can read it? Hmm, let's see if we can get no, it. I can't. Uh, well, no, I guess not. Well, let me zoom in. Huh, where? The hall had about 500, 500 in it, women mostly, a lot of bald heads and a dozen or two young men. The chairman was a Weasley minister with a reddish nose. He lamented on Crumpleton's absence, so, absence, soliloquised on his influenza and gave me a certificate as a trusted leader of Australian thought. There were two policemen at the door and I, <clears throat> and I hope they took note of that testimonial. Oh. Then Sir Harry started. Oh, come on, why don't you just tell it, let him speak instead of, uh... Yeah, well, I don't mind reading it. In a queer way, I liked the speech. You could see the niceness of the chap shining out behind the muck with which he had been spoon-fed. I guess he doesn't approve of his politics. He had, about, he had about a bushel of notes from which he read, and when he let go of them, he fell into one prolonged stutter. Every now and then, he remembered a phrase he had learned by heart, straightened his back, and gave it off like Henry Irving. The next moment, he was bent double and crooning over his papers. He said that, he said that but for the Tories, Germany and Britain would be, like, would be fellow workers in peace and reform. I thought of the little black book in my pocket. A giddy lot Scudder's friends cared for peace and reform. <laughs> 
He talked about the German menace and said it was all a Tory intervention to cheat the poor of their rights and keep back the great flood of social reform, but that organised labour realised this and laughed the Tories to scorn. He was all for reducing our navy as a proof of, good, of our good faith, and then sending Germany an ultimatum, telling her to do the same, or we would knock her into a cocked hat. I gotta remember <laughs> that one. I'm gonna knock mm. you into a cocked hat. Yes, that's a, that's, that's a nice. That's a hat with a friend. cock on it. <laughs> oh hat. yeah. I'm gonna make you walk around wearing a hat with a cock on it. <laughs> I'm. I mightn't be much of an orator, but I was a thousand percent better than Sir Harry. Of course, Sir Harry. I simply told them all I could remember about Australia, all about its Labour Party and emigration and universal service, praying there should be no Australian there. The chances. I doubt if I remembered to mention free trade, but I said there were no Tories in Australia, only Labour and Liberals. And I started to tell them the kind of glorious business I thought could be made of the Empire if we really put our backs into it. Altogether, I fancy I was rather a success. I think I heard the speech. Well, it probably have been very long and uh, a bit full of obscure politics, yeah, we don't know. The minister didn't like me, though. <clears throat> I'd like to propose a vote of thanks to Sir Harry for his statesman-like speech, and to Mr. Twisden, whose words had the eloquence of an emigration agent. What was that? See that Emigration guy, agent. Those big eyes on the oh. screen for a second. Like. A ripping speech, Tristan. Now, I think that was a close up of the. Yeah. I'm all alone, and if you'll stop a day or two, I'll show you some very decent fishing. How about I show you a ripping something else? <laughs> How about I show you my cock hat? <laughs> Back at Sir Harry's, we had a hot supper and then drank grog. What is this, Monkey Island? Drink uh, oh well, not only, not just <laughs> pirates. The time had come for me to put my cards on the table. I saw by this man's eyes that he was the kind you can trust. He's a politician, you can't trust any of them. Yeah. Listen, Sir Harry, I have something pretty important to say to you. You're a good fellow, and I'm going to be frank. Let's go to bed together. Where on oh, earth my. did you get that poisonous rubbish you talk tonight? Oh, was it as bad as that? It did sound rather thin. I got most of it out of the progressive magazine and pamphlets that agent chap of mine keeps sending me. But you surely don't think Germany would ever go to war with us? Ask that question in six weeks and it won't need an answer. If you'll give me your attention for half an hour, I'm going to tell you a story. This guy's name is Sir Harry Balzac. 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 <laughs> I blinked no detail. That's good. And get, get a politician involved. Uh, <laughs> so you see, you have got here in your you house, here in the, your man house the man that is wanted for the Portland Place murder. murder. Your duty is to send your car for the police and give me up. I don't think I'll get very far. There'll be an accident. And I'll have a knife in my ribs an hour or so after arrest. Mm. Nevertheless, it's your duty as a law-abiding citizen. Perhaps in a month's time you'll be sorry, but you have no cause to think of that. He was looking at me with bright, steady eyes. <clears throat> Did you hear there was an echo before? Yeah, there, there was. I wonder um, why. Okay. So you see? Yeah, so, you see? So, so you see? So you see? What was your job in Rhodesia, Mr. Hannay? Mining engineer. I've made my pile cleanly, and I've had a good time in the making of it. Not a profession that weakens the nerves, is it? <laughs> As to that, my nerves are good enough. Oh, that is quite a knife. I took the hunting knife and did the old Mashona trick of tossing it in the air and catching it in my lips. That sounds oh, that's incredibly dangerous. Trick. <laughs> uh, uh, that's uh, quite a trick. Yeah, seriously, that sounds like that is I'm gonna end up with a severed tongue. 
I don't want proof. I may be an ass on the platform, but I can size up a man. You're no murderer, and you're no fool. I believe you're speaking the truth. I'm going to back you up. Now, what can I do? First, I want you to write a letter to your uncle. I've got to get in touch with the government people sometime before the 15th of June. Are you there or did you step away? I think he said one second, so I knocked on his door. Come and knock on our door. Take a step that is new. Go to the uh, sorry. Space so sorry, that sorry, someone changed. Phase three's company two. Right. So I'll just sing it one more time. Yeah, sorry, someone came in. It's all right. Um I uh Come and dance on our floor. I right, sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> No, I've never, I've never seen that show, but I've heard the theme song a bunch of times. Oh yeah, it starts to come and knock on our door, and so I was thinking that I heard someone knocking at <laughs> your door. Uh, he pulled his moustache. That won't help you. Uh -huh. This is foreign office business, and my uncle would have nothing to do with it. Besides, you'd never convince him. No, I'll go one better. I'll write to the permanent secretary at the foreign office. He's my godfather and one of the best going. Now, what do you want? He sat down at a table and wrote and wrote to my dictation. What was that scale of the person again? Hmm. Oh, my. <laughs> wrote a letter to your dictation. Oh, can you show the text? Yep. Dear Walter, I hope this letter finds you well, and I must apologise for not being in touch for su such a while, long while. I'm finding all my time taken up with this political business, even to the detriment of my fishing. Anyway, on to more important matters. Without sounding overly enigmatic, I'm writing to say that if a man called Twisden happens to make your acquaintance before the 15th of June this year, it would be to your benefit to treat him kindly, despite what he may look like. This Twisden chap will provide his bona, fide, his bona fides by passing the words Black Stone and whistling Annie Laurie. Listen carefully to him, dear uncle, as he has something to say that might just wake you up. Cheerio and happy hunting, Harry. Good. That's the proper style. Oh, by the way, you'll find my godfather, his name's Sir Walter Bullivant, down at his country cottage for Whitsuntide. It's close to Artenswell on the Kennet. And that's done. That means a lot. Now, what's the next thing? Hmm. You're about my height. Lend me the oldest tweed suit you've got. Anything will do, so long as the colour is the opposite of the clothes I destroyed this afternoon. Then, show me a map of the neighbourhood and explain to me the lie of the land. Lastly, if the police come seeking me, just show them the car in the glen. If the other lot turn up, tell them I caught the South Express after your meeting. Huh? Getting all his bases covered. He did, or promised to do, all these things. I shaved off the remnants of my moustache and got inside an ancient suit of what I believe is called heather mixture. Sounds uncomfortable. <coughs> the map gave me some notion of my whereabouts and told me the two things I wanted to know. Where the main railroad, railroad to the south could be joined and what the wildest district and what were the wildest districts near at hand? Cool map. He wakened me from my slum slumbers in the smoking room arm, and led me blinking into the dark, starry night. I guess we're meant to go to the tool shed. Seems to be our only option. An old bicycle was found in a tool shed and handed over to me. We collected it. Nice. First, we've got a lot of the right right now. And by the long firwood. By daybreak, you'll be well into the hills. Then I should pitch the machine into a bog and take to the moors on foot. You can put in a week among the shepherds and be as safe as if you were in New Guinea. Thank you. Think yeah. nothing of it. You got me out of a tight spot last night. Now, you better get cracking. Good luck. Head for the hills. 
I pedaled diligently up steep roads of hill gravel till the skies grew pale with morning. Well, you didn't run to the hills, you cycled there. <laughs> they should say run for the hills, not run to the hills. Um, I'm going to go get, refill my drink. You, you good for the chapter, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I should be good. Uh, hang on one second, I'll uh, be right back. I'll refill mine as well. Well, we'll both be right back, everybody. Hey, Pirate Gear Boy, I'm glad to see you're here. We'll be right back in a second. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no balance that you can set in the game between the music and the and the talking. So it's it's like one of those games. And also, there's no way to run it in a window. Um, so, Pirate Gamer, well, first of all, thank you for saying hi because, like, you know, it's good to know people are here. Chats chats usually sort of quiet these types of games, but um, you know, let me get to a spot where it's not playing music, and then we'll then I'll have to explain to you what's going on. When there's, when, there's a, when there's a break after after a text message. <clears throat> Hi, Yellow Snow. How's it going? I no sat down and took stock of my position. Nobody eat Yellow Snow. I think I make that yeah, joke every you. time. Um, <laughs> so Pirate Gear Boy, like, just basically the very bare bones summary. This guy, Mr. Hannay, is, was Richard his first name? Yes. Dick Dick Hannay. Um, he's he's like a world traveler or whatever, but he's living, living in London. Some dude who lived in the upstairs apartment basically came down and told him that he, he, he faked his own death because he's a spy and he's on the run from some people. Can he stay with him for a while? He didn't believe him, but then some people broke into his apartment and killed this, this spy guy. And so he took his secret notebook... And he fled because the, the murderers were after him too, and so were the cops. They thought he did it. So he's fled up to Scotland. The police are still after him for the murder. These these bad evil spies are also after him to kill him or to find out what he knows. And he's deduced that apparently there's some kind of plot for um, there's I guess the the, French, the, the England is going to have some kind of conference with France or something. And then somehow these spies uh, are to get this information and give it to Germany or something or Russia or something like that. It's and create some kind of excuse to start World War One, <laughs> the Great, I guess you know whatever. So that that's sort of the idea. The, 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 the spy stuff is not completely explained at this point. Well, this guy mostly knows he's trying to survive until June fifteenth and get the information to the right person because supposedly June fifteenth is when this stuff's going to go down. I think right now it's supposed to be like June first or something or end of May or something like that. Did I explain that okay, Dorian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sums it up. Like basically, he's discovered a conspiracy to start World War One 
now the people in the conspiracy are chasing him. <clears throat> yep. All right, why don't you go ahead, Dorian, if you're ready. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I sat down and took stock of my position. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Good food. Sorry, getting some lag here. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I realized that my vantage ground might be reality. You cut out there for a second. Is your internet working all right? Ah, crap, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the getting some lag. I think I'm... I think we're going over each other. Um, okay. I realized that my vantage ground might be in reality a trap. Did that come through okay? There was no cover for a for a tom, for a tom tit in these bald green places. What's a tom tit? Are you a tom tit? What's a tom tit? I don't know. I feel like um, before... You, it, it was illegal to talk about boobs back then, so I feel like that's a bird or something. Yeah, maybe it's like a like the tit of a, of a cat, a tom tit. Yeah, it. Yeah, apparently it's a bird. Hang on one second. Yeah. It. What's this error here? Hold on. Error. YouTube is not receiving a video to maintain smooth streaming. Why the hell not? Ah. That's annoying. I don't know why. I'm, set, I'm setting 30 FPS and nothing's dropping, so... You guys, are you guys having an okay experience on YouTube, or is that is something wrong? I'll open, I'll there, open right? on my phone. Um, okay. uh, guys, let, let me know if there's any problem with the with the, with the the video on YouTube. You don't have to look. There's other people. The stream didn't freeze up. We really just find out. So it's okay, good. Let us know if anything goes wrong. Oh, my God. There might be a chance on the moors to, to the right or left. My enemies had located me, and the next thing would be a cordon round me. I didn't know what force they could command, but I was certain it would be sufficient. The aeroplane had seen my bicycle, and would conclude that I would try to escape by road. The bike. Oh man. Yeah, what a waste. Ruining, he's ruining a lot of vehicles today. <laughs> That's true. Like, G, he's like playing GTA. <laughs> then I climbed to a knoll which gave me a view of the two valleys. At other times I would have liked the place, but now it seemed to suffocate me. The three moorlands were prison walls, and the keen hill air was the breath of a dungeon. I tossed a coin. Heads right, tails left. Let's go to the right. What kind of weird coin is that? Uh, I feel like that's a. Doesn't look like. Doesn't look like English text. Yeah. I think that's probably just an English coin from back then. Probably King George on the. Yeah. Coin. Then I found the road one. Good day to you. He looked at me with a fishy eye. Confound the day I ever left the Herden. There I was, my own maester. Now I'm a slave to the government, tethered to the roadside with Sir Ian in a back like a suckle. Sir Ian? Oh. What's an Ian? Sir Ian. Sir is sore, I guess. So what's Ian? Yeah. I don't know. Sir Ian... I don't know. The plight of the road <clears throat> the plight of the road mender was a difficult one. Breaking up stones and laying them across miles of Scottish tracks was a tough job indeed. That does sound rather dull. You don't have a smartphone to listen to podcasts while you do it. He was a wild figure about my size but much bent, with a week's beard on his chin and a big pair of horn spectacles. Oh mercy when my head's bursting. I can't do it. The surveyor man just report me. I'm from my bed. What is your trouble, may I ask? His trouble was clear enough. The trouble is that I'm no sober. Last <laughs> night my daughter Merrin was wadded. 
and they danced till four in the byre. Me and some other chills sat down to the drinking, and here I am. Pity that I ever look at on the wine when this was red. Sleep sounds like your best bet. Mm, it's easy speaking. But I got a postcard yestreen saying that the new road surveyor would be run the day. He'll come and he'll no find me, or else he'll find me foo, and either way I'm a done man. I'll have all back to my bed and see him no wheel, but I doubt that'll no help me, for they can my kind of no wheelness. <laughs> then I had an inspiration. So Park Gear Boy asked, I take it you like this better that World's Fair game. I mean, oh. I really like the graphics of this game and the sound, except for the, the sad the audio balance. But the every, the graphics of the sound are both really good. Um, the World's Fair game though had puzzles. This one doesn't really. So they're, they're two different games. I don't you know one's not better than the other. I like this that more game to some extent. Yeah, it was. It was. It, this is more a straight narrative. Yeah, that was more of a game slash. This, Slash educational historical tour. I mean, the problem with that game was that the map was too too big. That was really that, that's yeah. really the. I mean, because it was trying to be a simulation. Yeah, again, a simulation of an actual location. Like, you which say is a the, cool concept. Has, has said so far, it's really good. It's a rare thing on this channel. Is so that the description? Hmm. I just really, I really am impressed. Not this particular like image here, but in general, the graphics of this game have been really beautiful, and, and I've just really liked it. Just enjoyed it. Yeah, no, the art in this is just excellent. Oh, it's just it's just so anything is better than the World's Fair game, let's be honest. <laughs> no, no, Stu has played much worse games than that. <laughs> Remember that Where's fucking, um... Oh, never mind. Uh... I, was, I was directed by a wavering finger to the cottage by the stream. What were you going to say, Dory? Which one is worse? Uh, you know, I... Well, there's so many that have been worse. Remember that, like, um... Like... Lots of like stock trading simulator that barely works. <laughs> or, like, That's true. Yeah. Oh like, my goodness. I, I mean, I'm sure I, I'll think of others more. I still think the worst ones we've played, like the absolute worst games on the channel so far have been the, the duo of the Silver Case and the 25th Ward. I, I just. Think uh, I, I didn't watch those because I, 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 like, I like your streams, but those. those yeah, games see, just they're dragged. so bad you couldn't even watch them. So that's what I mean. They're, they're yeah, they, they just the dragged. Yeah, they were, they were terrible. Well, back to your bed and sleep in peace. I'll take on your job for a bit and see the surveyor. Oh, this guy's gonna... Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm... Can you just give me a few seconds? Yeah, no, it's okay. So this guy's so nervous, Mr. Dory. You think I'm paying him or something? Everybody can wait, it's okay. I can tell you my song from before. Yeah, Lightspan Adventures. <laughs> uh... Oh, by the way, I heard a funny joke. I can't, I can't, can't really repeat it, though, actually. Yeah, I'll have to wait. Why, will it get you cancelled? No, it's just like... I, 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 the reason why I heard a funny joke is because uh, I... Um, I, I, like, help Al Lowe edit his joke email list, CyberJoke3000, and oh. so, I, so I get the jokes in advance. So it's a funny joke, but it's an advanced joke, so I can't really... If I see it here, then, like, it's it's not fair. Like, people get it in the, in the, in the you know, the email, we'll, we'll have it spoiled, potentially, so I'll get in trouble with Mr. Lowe. I don't want that to happen. Um, mm. Anyway, go ahead, here. It's your turn to read. Okay. Uh, try restarting your computer, Michael. Okay, sorry. Um, he stared at me blankly then, as the notion dawned on his fuddled brain. As the notion dawned, notion. Jesus, what's wrong with you? As the notion dawned on his fuddled brain, his face broke into the vacant drunkard smile. Eh? Oh. Oh. Hey, you the Billy? It'll be easy enough managed. You call me I've eunuch. finished that bingo stain, so you need to no, chop any milk. <laughs> Just, just take the bar and of... peel enough metal for your own quarry down the road to make another bang in the morn. My name's Alexander Turnbull, and I've been seven year at the trade and twenty or four that herding and leafin water. My friends call me Aki, and Wales Specky for I wear glasses in wake of the sight. 
Just you speak the surveyor fair and calm, sir, and you'll be well pleased. I'll be back, uh, my day. Hey, El Jefe. El Jefe says I prefer the 69 steps version of this game. Yeah, I sure do too, actually. The video there is even better than this one, but, you know, what can you do? Yeah, uh, one. I borrowed his spectacles and filthy old hats, stripped off coat, waistcoat, and collar, and gave him them to carry home. I borrowed, too, the foul stump of a clay pipe as an extra property. He indicated my simple tasks, and without more ado, set off at an amble bedwards. Then I set to work to dress for the part. Changing clothes a lot in this. Yeah. I opened the collar of my shirt. It was a vulgar blue and white check such as plowmen wear, and revealed a neck as brown as any tinkers. What that means? Why is he so brown? I guess. Is he, is he I like guess, naturally brown? Or... I think. I think the implications that you uh, tinkerers they work outdoors and get tans. Oh, he's, yeah, he's a sun tan. Okay. Um, I rubbed a good deal of dirt also into the sunburn of my cheeks. Ugh. My boots did not satisfy me, but by dint of kicking among the stones, I reduced them to the like surface, which marks a, a roadman's foot gear. I broke one of the boot laces and retied it in a clumsy knot, and loosened the other so that my thick grey socks bulged over the uppers. Really getting into the past. I bit and scraped my fingernails till the edges were all cracked and uneven. The men I, the men I was matched against would miss no detail. I rolled up my sleeves and there was a forearm which might have been a blacksmith's, sunburnt and rough with old scars. A roadman's eyes would no doubt be a little inflamed, so I some, contrived to get, to get some dust in both of mine, and by a dint of vigorous rubbing produced a bleary effect. I would never do that. Yeah, seriously. Then I mutilated my corneas so I would actually need glasses. <laughs> the sandwiches Sir Harry had given me had gone off with the coat, but the roadman's lunch, tied up in a red handkerchief, was at my disposal. I did, I did up the bundle again and put the paper conspicuously beside it. On I went trundling this, my loads of stone with the heavy step of the professional. Soon I grew warm and the dust on my face changed into solid and abiding grit. Are you Alexander Turnbull? I am the new county road surveyor. You live at Black Hawk Foot and have charge of the section from Laidlaw Byers to the Rigs. Good. A fair bit of road, Turnbull, and not badly engineered. A little soft about a mile off and the edges want cleaning. See you look after that. Good morning. You'll know me the next time you see me. Clearly my get-up was good enough for the dreaded surveyor. Well, that guy's going to be in trouble next time when he turns out he was the wrong person. Yeah, that was a short one. Yeah, so 27th of May. So June 15th is when all this stuff's going down, supposedly. Hmm. We're in Peebleshire. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we're on a deadline. Peebleshire. Just about midday, a big car stole down the road, glided past and drew up a hundred yards beyond. Its three occupants descended as if to stretch their legs and sauntered towards me. Two of the men I had seen before, the, uh, before from the windows of the Galloway Inn, one lean, sharp and dark, the other comfortable and smiling. The third had the look of a countryman, a vet perhaps, or a small farmer. He was dressed in ill-cut knickerbockers, and, and the eye of his head was as bright and wary as a hen's. Interesting descriptions here. Hmm. 
Well, Morning! That's a fine, easy job of yours. Uh. I slowly and painfully straightened my back after the roadman spat vigorously after the manner of the low Scot and regarded them steadily before replying. There's real jobs, and there's better. I would rarely have yours, sitting a day on your hinderlands in eight cushions. It's you and your muckle cores that wreck my roads. If we all had our rechts, you should be made to mend what you break. The bright-eyed man was looking at the newspaper lying beside Turnbull's bundle. I see you get your papers in good time. Aye, in good time. Seeing that that paper come out last Saturday, I'm just six days late. He picked it up, glanced at the subscription, and laid it down again. Superscription, sorry. You have a fine sorry. taste in boots. These were never made by a country shoemaker. They were oh. not. They were made in London. I got the through the gentleman that was here last year for the shooting. What was his name now? I scratched a forgetful head. Let us get on. This fellow is all right. Oh, Let us get a on. German. This fellow is all right. Uh, did you see anyone pass early this morning? He might be on a bicycle or he might be on foot. I very nearly fell into the trap and told a story of a bicyclist hurrying down the grey, hurrying past in the grey dawn. Uh, wasn't up very early, you see. My daughter was married last night, and we keep it up late. I opened the house door about seven, and there was nobody on the road then. Since I come up here, there has just been the baker and the Rachel herd, besides you, gentlemen. What the surveyor? Hmm. Yeah, I should have mentioned him. One of them gave me a cigar, which I smelt gingerly and stuck in Turnbull's bundle. At least they're polite. They were out of sight in three minutes, and my heart leapt with an enormous relief. You know, this reminds me of, I heard a story a long time ago that, uh, I don't, I don't remember who, who this was that told me this story, but, like, basically they were, they ended up in a really bad neighborhood in New York, and this was... You know, back when the neighborhoods were bad, like, so let's say 30 years ago. Um, it's not as bad now as it used to be. But basically he was waiting for a bus to get out of this neighborhood. I don't know how he got there to begin with. And there was like a whole bunch of, like a whole gang of hoodlums that, like, were walking in his direction. And he felt like they were going to, like, bug him or something like that. He was wearing a suit, so what he did was he, like flipped the collar up and he like pour, pulled the suit jacket around him like as if he was like using it for warmth and he was like he sort of dirtied up a little bit and then he walked over to the uh like the leader of this group and he said uh hey uh like do you, do you a dollar can you give me a dollar like i really need a dollar like basically pretend he was begging and then like the guy looked at him and said are you shitting me <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 I really need some of it. Then they gave him a dollar and they left, apparently. Oh, my God. Like he really believes that, like, basically, <laughs> if they would have thought that he had, like, money, he would have been in big trouble. So, anyway, oh, that's well, the story that, of that's, you. <laughs> that's some quick thinking. That is some quick thinking. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'd like to see New York one day. Yeah, well, you'd, you'd rather see it now than, than 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> not that not that nice back then, eh? Yeah. Oh, did you read this already? I don't remember. Uh, I'll read it again. They were out of sight in three minutes, and my heart leapt with enormous relief. I went on wheeling my stones. It was as well, but ten minutes later the car returned, one of the occupants waving a hand to me. Those gentry left nothing to chance. I finished Turnbull's bread and cheese, and pretty soon I had finished the stones. This, this boy had smartly kept on doing it. Yeah. The next step was what puzzled me. I had a notion that the cordon was still tight round the glen, and that if I walked in any direction I should meet with question, questioners. 
Get out, I must. No man's nerve could stand more than a day of being spied on. Then suddenly... Excuse me, may I trouble you for a light? Shockly. By an amazing chance, I knew him. His name was Marmaduke Jopley, <laughs> and he was an offence to creation. I'm not surprised by a name like that. Marmaduke Jopley. The only person thing I've ever heard of Marmaduke before was that dog from the, the comic strip. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I, I remember hearing about that. Comic it was never in the papers I read, but I heard about it. And then Netflix made a terrible movie about it that everyone hated. It, well, the, the comics were never funny either. It was like it was. Yeah. It was never funny at all, anyway. You can only make so many jokes about, like, this dog is too big. <laughs> I had a business introduction to his firm when I came to London, and he was good enough to ask me to dinner at his club. There he showed off at a great rate, and patterned about his, du his duchesses till the, snobbery of the cre till the snobbery of the creature turned me sick. I asked a man afterwards why nobody kicked him and was told that Englishmen re reverence the weaker sex. Okay. Okay. He was a sort of blood stockbroker who did, his, who did his business by toadying eldest sons and rich peers and foolish old ladies. He would crawl a mile on his belly to anything that had a title or a million. Uh, That's that good. Person. So basically kind of person who'd be selling MLMs these days. Selling what? Anyhow, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's peddling pyramid schemes now or whatever. Oh, pyramid schemes. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyhow, there he was, nattily dressed in a fine new car, obviously on his way to his smart friends, and he hadn't a clue who I was. Jump in. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Ah, ah, Hello, Jopley. Uh, well met, my lad. Who the devil are you? My name's Hanny, uh, from Rhodesia, uh, you remember? Good God, the murderer! Just so. And there'll be a second murder, oh, my dear. Uh, if you don't do as I tell you, give me that coat of yours, that cap uh, too. Changing clothes again. He has to get away from these guys. Yeah, I guess. This really is like GTA, now we're hijacking a car. <laughs> He did, he did as bid, for he was blind with terror. Over my dirty trousers and vulgar shirt, I pulled on his smart driving coat, which buttoned high at the top and thereby hid the deficiencies in my collar. I stuck the cap on my head and added his gloves to my get-up. The dusty roadman in a minute was transformed into one of the neatest motorists in Scotland. On Mr. Jopley's head, I... Excuse me. On Mr. Jopley's head, I clapped Turnbull's unspeakable hat and told him to keep it there. <laughs> now, my child, sit quite still and be a good boy. I mean you no harm. I'm only borrowing your car for an hour or two. But if you play me any tricks, and above all, if you open your mouth, as sure as there's a god above me, I'll wring your neck. Savvy? <laughs> just, just don't hurt me. Savvy. 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 <laughs> I enjoyed that evening's ride. Get getting too personal here, man. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a contrived coincidence that this guy he knows would show up in the middle of nowhere in Scotland. Well, it's not to have one coincidence. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not like a massive... It's not like a plot-changing one. Right. As the dark fell, I turned up a side glen into an unfrequented corner of the hills. This whole place is unfrequented. Yeah, it's been going nowhere. Soon the villagers were left behind, then the farms, and then even the wayside. Here we stopped, and I obligingly reversed the car and restored Mr. to Mr. Jopley his belongings. A thousand thanks. There's more use in you than I thought. Now be off and find the police. I'll get you! Is he taking the car? Are we taking the car? We're take, do we take the car or we give him the car? No, I think we let him keep the car. 
I mean, I guess if we took the car, then the yeah. cops would be on the lookout for that too. As I sat on the hillside, I, reflect, uh, I reflected on the various <laughs> kinds of crime I had now, I had now sampled. Yeah, GTA, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Contrary to general belief, I was not a murderer, but I had become an unholy liar, a shameless imposter, and a highwayman with a marked taste for expensive <laughs> motor cars. <laughs> Well, you know, you were complaining about being bored. How many did we do today? We did. Just did half of this one. I... One, two, three, four, five and a half. One yeah, more? Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, this one's the new one. The game yeah. is up. Things are looking desperate for Hanny. Uh oh. Uh. uh so sorry, just half a second again. No problem. Yeah, we'll How's everyone in the chat doing? The guys are patiently watching the, the, story, the show here on the story. Put you all to bed. Bedtime story. We'd rather be seeing War 3's company. Tonight I'm gonna have myself a good time. Ah, sorry about that. <clears throat> Well, this is not good, just super tired tonight. Uh, right, we're ready for you, Dorian. Uh, Whenever you're ready. Right. Okay. I spent the night on the hillside. It was a cold business, for I had neither coat nor weight. Waistcoat. Yeah, you cut out for a second. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It was a cold business, for I had neither coat nor waistcoat. That's good. These, these were in Mr. Turnbull's keeping, and was Scudder's, as was Scudder's little book, my watch, and worst of all, my pipe and tobacco pouch. Why did you take that stuff out of his coat? I guess he didn't think of it. I mean, forget the tobacco yeah, pouch. Right. The book is pretty important. Yeah, and I did. You've like lost all proof of this conspiracy now. You're kind yeah. of completely flying blind. Yeah, that's it's like a major oversight. Yeah. <laughs> now some random guy in rural Scotland is going to know about it. At least, well, probably nobody will ever find it because they're not going to know that that guy has it. Yeah. Only my money. Only my money accompanied me in my belt. And about half a pound of ginger biscuits in my trouser pocket. Well, yeah, Huffface is good here, and it also is good just playing Doom. Well, I'm glad you played Doom. That's a good, good thing to do. Doom is fun. Doom is a. Which Doom? Like the very first, or 2016? I'm assuming or? the first one. Yeah, it could be the new one. Who knows? I sucked half of these biscuits, and by by worming myself deeper into, <sighs> deep into the heather, got some kind of warmth. <sighs> Excuse me. What did he say? He wormed himself into Heather. Yeah. Who's Heather? Yeah. Oh my! Oh my God! He just found some random girl on the moors and <laughs> banged her. <laughs> but, you know, he's he's had a stressful he's had a stressful day. <laughs> Go ahead. So far, I had been miraculously lucky. My chief trouble was that I was desperately hungry. I lay and tortured myself. The ginger biscuits merely emphasised the aching void, with the memory of all the good food I had thought so little of in London. 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 In longing hopelessly for, the, for these dainties, I fell asleep. Dainties, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's nice, nice, nice effects there, I like that. Yeah, this is gorgeous, like the art is, this is what I... I see what you mean about the graphics and the art is gorgeous. Yep. I woke very cold and stiff about an hour after dawn. Yeah, there's really too much information, seriously. Like, I don't know why they have to keep yeah. on doing that. It's like, not, not necessary. Yeah, that's how we all, that's how all of us wake up, dude. Like, you know, <laughs> don't need to spell it out. It took me a little while to remember where I was. I raised myself in my arms and looked down in the valley. And that, and that one look had set me lacing up my boots in mad haste. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They've been chased. There were men below, not more than a quarter of a mile off, spaced out on the hillside like a fan. Oh, poor Heather. Oh, she gets raped in our vest. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was a bit dark. 
<laughs> be the Heather. That's not nice. Yeah, All right. Marnie had not been slow in looking for his revenge. Marnie. Mm -hmm. His barbecue oh, tournament. Oh. I scrambled to the top of the ridge. My pursuers were patiently quartering the hillside and moving upwards. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to pause one more, one more second. So professional. Just kidding. I would show you guys some stuff, but I'm sure by the time I do that, I'll be back. I know you're not paying me, but you know, you're paying me with distractions from my sad existence. It's alright, it happens. Life, life is life. <laughs> um, anyway, I scrambled to the top of the ridge. My pursuers were patiently quartering the hillside and moving upwards. Keeping behind the skyline, I ran for maybe half a mile. Then I showed myself. The line of search had changed its direction. I pretended, oh, sorry, I'm losing track of where we are. I pretended to retreat over the skyline, but instead I went back the way I had come. I think they're trying to show that it's like he's all running around in different directions. So they move everything. Yeah, no, that's cool. Jump it's around like too. Creative. 20 minutes. Yeah. In 20 minutes, I was behind the ridge overlooking my sleep space. The police had evidently called in local talent to their talent to their aid, and the men I could see had the appearance of herds or oh, game keepers. Dory, you know, we can hear you, by the way. I don't know if you know that. that oh, that, shit. That what? panting and stuff? Like, I can hear you. It's not like, you know... <laughs> oh, actually, like, can, can you wait till, like, after the stream to do that? Like, seriously. Wow. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> well, now that's all... Um, now you can go viral. <laughs> as uh, the creepers started <laughs> masturbating on the screen. You'll, you'll get a bunch more subscribers. Yeah, I'm not the kind I want, though. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. ahead. <laughs> the exercise had warmed my blood, and I was beginning to enjoy myself. Come on, man. Seriously. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 Chases over the moors just really turned me off. No, no, the top one, though. I, tr I trusted to the strength of my legs, but I was well aware that those behind me would be familiar with the lie of the land, and that my ignorance would be a heavy handicap. A lot of people. <clears throat> My stratagem had given me a fair start, all at 20 minutes, and I had the width of the glen beh behind me before I saw the, the first heard heads of the pursuers. Then I sh oh, no. From that viewpoint, I had the satisfaction of seeing the pursuit streaming up the hill at the top of the glen on a hopelessly false scent. <laughs> It began to seem less of a game. These fellows behind were hefty men on their naked heat. Looking back, I saw that only three were following direct, and I guess the others had, fe had fetched a circuit to cut me off. I resolved to get out of this tangle of blends to the pocket of war I had seen from the tops. So. I put on a great spurt and got off my ridge and down into the moor before any figures appeared on, on the skyline behind me. Seriously, I don't want to hear about your great spurt. Yeah. Oh my god. Enough, seriously. Well, it, well, he's been working up to it with that pan thing. <laughs> That's <just> true. <laughs> clearly, clearly the road ran to a house and I began to think of doing the same. Let's lodge up with a, another random person, not on three. Should I, should I like, go to this house? Should I, like, run? Or should I walk over here, down, down the path? I'm just hiding in the river. 
Oh, look at this. God. This is so stupid. <laughs> what if oh I, my god, how do I? What if I do the wrong thing? Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's not even showing on the screen. Oh. Oh my goodness. I forgot how to move forward. I do like this thing. Yeah, does that make us run in a circle? <laughs> 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 oh, <see> you. <laughs> 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 it's so stupid. <laughs> oh, good thing we're here to remove, remind him how to move forward. I saw the face of an elderly gentleman meekly watching within the glass. Veranda. Seated uh, at the knee-hole desk was the bene benevolent old gentleman, with some papers and open volumes before him. That like, architecture looks very modern, like white walls with just clear glass in them. Yeah, it looks pretty modern, I agree. Mm. His face was round and shiny, with big glasses stuck on the end of his nose, and the top of his head was as bright and bare as a glass bottle. This is where I wish they would just show us the face of the guy. Yeah. I guess they want to include a lot of the narrative. <laughs> You seem in a hurry, my friend. I nodded toward the window. It gave a prospect across the moor, and the revealing and the re <clears throat> and revealed figures half a mile off, straggling through the heather. Oh my God! Ah, the poor girl a break. A fugitive from justice, eh? Well, we'll go into the matter at our leisure. Meantime, I object to my privacy being broken in upon by the clumsy rural policeman. Go into my study and you will see two doors facing you. Take the one on the left and close it behind you. You will be perfectly safe. God, everyone is so trusting. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're running from the police? You're hiding in my house. <laughs> Oh, maybe this guy's not everything you see <laughs> Once again, I had found an unexpected sanctuary. Oh, it's pretty expected at this point. <laughs> the master of the house, sitting in a deep armchair, now regarded me with curious eyes. Yeah, they show the face, but like a weird silhouette. Hmm. They gone? They have gone. I convinced them that you'd cross the hill. I do not choose that the police should come between me and one whom I am delighted to honor. This is a lucky morning for you, Mr. Richard Hanny. Oh. As he spoke, his eyelids seemed to tremble and to fall a little over his keen grey eyes. That's cool, you can see the eyes, actually. Yeah. That's interesting. That's inter Looks like a bird. Yeah. In a flash, the, fa the phrase of Scudder's came back to me when he had described the man he most dreaded in the world. Uh -oh. He said he could hood his eyes like a hawk. Oh, you're right, he's like a bird. I saw that I'd walked straight into the enemy's headquarters. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we've walked into the bad guys. <laughs> it's a wattle. Kill him. <laughs> okay, let's just murder him. <laughs> he seemed to anticipate my intention, for he smiled gently and nodded to the door behind me. I turned and saw two men servants who had me covered with pistols. Uh-oh. Game oh, over. Dear. He knew my name, but he had never seen me before. And as the reflection darted across my mind, I saw a splendor chance. Oh, he wandered into the bad guy's lair. I don't know what you mean. And who are you calling Richard Annie? My name's Ainsley. So? Uh, but of course you have others. We won't quarrel about a name. I was pulling myself together now, and reflected that my garb, lacking coat and waistcoat and collar, 
would at any rate not betray me. I put on my surliest face and shrugged my shoulders. I suppose you're going to give me up after all, and I call it a damn dirty trick. My oh, God, I wish I'd never seen that cursed motor car. Here's the money and be damned to you. He opened his eyes a little. Oh, that face says, was that Sean Connery? I'll take eight tits for $500, Alex. Is it oh. like, appetite something or other? Yeah, whatever it was. <laughs> I forget the, the Celebrity a... Jeopardy from Saturday Night Live. Uh, I, do, I, do. <clears throat> I have never seen Jeopardy. I only know about it because people like keep making that Alex quote. No, it was, yeah, it was an old, like, it was a ske- sketch, on Sa- sketch on Saturday Night Live where... Daryl Hammond was Sean was trying to be Sean Connery. He was like, like your mother to the back. There was always some clue that was like uh, something he was able to misread. Like one time it said, "The pen is mighty," and he said, "Like I'll take the penis mighty for five hundred. Like there was always some stupid thing like that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, oh no, I shall not give you up. My friends and I will have a little private settlement with you. That is all. You know a little too much, Mr. Halley. I'm sure You're a clever mistake. actor, but not quite clever enough. <laughs> he spoke with assurance, but I could see the dawning of a doubt in him. Oh, oh, we're gonna God trick the main bad guy. Stop jawing! Everything is against me. I haven't had a bit of luck since I came on shore at Leaf. What's the harm in a poor devil with an empty stomach picking up some money he finds in a bust-up motor car? That's all I've done, and for that, I've been chivied for two days by those blasted bobbies over those blasted hills. Oh, I tell you, I'm fair sick of it. You know what you like, old boy? Ned Ainsley's got no fight left in him. He's really good with accents. Yeah, no. He's very similar. I could see that the doubt was gaining. Will you oblige me with the story of your recent doings? I can't, Governor. I've not had a bite to eat for two days. Give me a mouthful of food, and then you'll hear God's truth. <laughs> I gotta, like, eat too? I gotta, like, yeah. I, gotta, like, like I can't, like... <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Oh, no, I can't remember how to eat food. Well, I'm so hungry, I've forgotten how to eat. That doesn't look like a good pork pie, though. That's that. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It's like so stupid. It's like... I don't know. It's like, it's like the, the most interactive this game gets. <laughs> Oh my. Can you read that? Stu. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Signed your name. Also, I think he's panting again. He's, I think he's like going, ah, 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 I wolf down like a pig, or rather, like Ned Ainsley. I was keeping up my character. <coughs> then I told him my story. This again. Oh, he's telling another fake story. God's troop. Ned Ainsley was a common Londoner who had arrived at Leith a week ago and was making his way overland to his brother at Wigtown. Ooh, a car. Oh my. He found three sovereigns lying in the seat of a bust up car and another on its floor. There was nobody there or any sign of the owner. So Ainsley pocketed the cash. The baker. 
Oh. Excuse me, do you have any custard pies? These are the only sovereigns in the country. You stole them. You tried to change a sovereign at the baker's, but the woman cried on the police. <laughs> police! Police! <laughs> a little later. Some time later. Graham decides to purchase the custard pie. Oh god. Oh god, no, I just got that reference. <laughs> that game was not good. The police had tracked him down as Ainsley and Ainsley was on the run across Scotland. Hand. I can have the money back for a fat lot of goodies done me. Those perishers are all down on a poor man. Now, if it had been you, Governor, that had found a quids, nobody would have troubled you. You're a good liar, Hanny. Stop fooling, damn you. I tell you, my name's Ainsley, and I never heard of anyone called Anna in my born days. I'd sooner have the police than you with your Hannays and your monkey face pistol tricks. No, no, Governor, I beg pardon. I don't mean that. I'm much obliged to you for the grub, and I'll, I'll thank you to let me go now the coast's clear. It was obvious he was badly puzzled. He had never seen me, and my appearance must have altered considerably from my photographs. Who's doing that with his hand? Is that the, guy, the old guy doing that, supposedly? Yeah, I think it was like just tapping his finger thoughtfully. I do not propose to let you go. If you are what you say you are, you will soon have a chance of clearing yourself. If you are what I believe you are, I do not think you will see the light much longer. Oh, so sorry, I've been interrupted again. Sorry. He rang a bell, and a third servant appeared from the veranda. Oh. We just have to wait a moment until Mr. Dorian comes back. I only got one mill cow, and she only eats cats! So just go away? <laughs> you, know that, you guys know what that's from. You can have that box out there. I didn't order it, and I didn't want it. The missus didn't order it, and she doesn't want it. And the cow don't need it. So just go away. Anybody can name that reference? I'm sure Pirate Gear Boy knows it. If he's still here. Uh, so sorry, this place is like a railway station right now. It wasn't a Shrek impression. That's okay. I'm, I'm using myself. To, are you, are you, are you good? Are you good to go? Yeah. Sorry, this place is like a railway station right it's now. All right. Yeah, um, you know, by the way, right. one of my favorite things I like to do is go to Grand yeah. Central Station in New York, and then like say pretty loudly, like it's like Grand Central Station in here. I I, I do that all the time when I'm in the area. It's it's very entertaining for me. Most people don't think it's funny, but <laughs> but I do. <laughs> Is that like a common expression? Like, it's like Grand Central Station? Yeah, in New York, it's like a common expression. It's like, it's like Grand Central Station here. Because Grand Central Station is a pretty big station if you've ever been there. They used it in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in Su the Superman the movie. If it was Lex Luthor's hideout. But anyway. Oh. Oh. That, that, I think that's funny. That's like a, uh, a bit of irony. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, go for it. Um... He rang a bell, and a third servant appeared from the veranda. By the way, always asleep. That was that 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 quoting I was doing was from Return to Zork. FYI. Uh -huh. I want the Lanchester in five minutes. There will be three to luncheon. <laughs> oh, whoa. You will know me next time, Governor. <laughs> What's he doing there? Oh, oh no. Oh no, a German. I don't know what that means. I, I think it was. Oh, a... I don't know. 
where we were, he's, we, we, he was telling us we to lock us somewhere, I think. Oh. I was marched out of the room with a pistol at each ear. Remember I said last time I went to the end of the cliffhanger? This was a good one. <laughs> yeah. We've just been captured by the old, the evil old German man. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven events left. Then we did one, like we two, did. three, four, five, six, and basically half half of this one. The whole one's a seven. So it's actually probably a good place to stop. And it's been two hours too. Two yeah. hours also, rather. Maybe next time we can finish up the uh, the rest of the job here. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's a good idea. I think so too. Like we fi we finished like, I wasn't sure if that guy was like grabbing him and dragging him off, or he was trying to have his way with him. It wasn't clear. No. Look at those guys' eyes in the background here. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's not. I think, yeah, that, that's. The, I think the implication that this guy is the main bad guy. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if Mr. Hannay is going to survive, or or Mr. Ainsley, or whatever his name is. Anyway, this has been fun. I think so, at least. So thank you all the people who have been here today in the chat. I can't necessarily see everybody. Um, thanks, guys. It's always asleep. It was a good time. Yeah, we had... Uh, let's see. I have to go back. Quit to profiles. Let me do this. There we go. Three hours and 33. I got 16 out of nine, 9 of 16 awards. Um, thank you to Always Asleep. Thank you to Yellow Snow. Thank you to El Jefe. Thank you to Pal Puck. Thank you to the Pirate Gear Boy 12. And also thank you to uh, Luis, who was here before. And uh, thank you very much to Dorian Karen for being the voice actor today. So, and his last time as well. We'll do this again probably Thursday night if it works for Dorian. But for now, yep. everybody, have a great evening, a great night, sleep well, and we'll do this again real soon. Peace out, everybody. Yeah.